John Sidney McCain, Jr. entered the world amidst the serene landscapes of Council Bluffs, Iowa, on a crisp January 17, 1911. It was a time when his father, John S. McCain Sr., a dedicated naval officer serving as a junior officer aboard the armored cruiser USS Washington, was traversing the vast expanses of the ocean. Meanwhile, his mother, Catherine Davy Vaux, embarked on a cross-country journey to visit her sister, leaving young McCain in the care of fate's tender hands. Fondly known as Jack, within the confines of his familial circle, McCain's upbringing was colored by a rich lineage steeped in military valor. His paternal uncle, the illustrious U.S. Army Brigadier General William Alexander McCain, adorned the family tree with a distinguished legacy of service, spanning generations and wars. McCain's childhood was marked by a nomadic existence, shaped by the transient nature of naval postings. From the bustling naval stations to the serene environs of northwest Washington, D.C., he traversed diverse landscapes, finding solace in the familiarity of local schools and the humble pursuit of delivering newspapers as a diligent paperboy. Yet, amidst the ebb and flow of naval duty, McCain's father remained an elusive figure, his absence casting a poignant shadow over his formative years, leaving his mother to navigate the labyrinth of parenthood single-handedly. It was amidst this backdrop that McCain completed his scholastic journey, graduating from Central High School in the heart of the district. In the annals of his adolescence, McCain's path converged with destiny's call as he entered the hallowed halls of the United States Naval Academy in 1927, a mere lad of 16 summers. However, the rigid strictures and archaic rituals of Annapolis proved to be a crucible of adversity for the spirited McCain. Disdainful of the entrenched culture of hazing and regimented discipline, he found himself ensnared in a tempest of rebellion, accruing a litany of demerits and languishing amidst mediocre academic laurels. A biographer would later paint a portrait of McCain as a rebellious soul, defiantly challenging the shackles of authority and finding refuge in clandestine escapades under the cloak of night. The specter of expulsion loomed large as his penchant for revelry and defiance flirted dangerously with the stern gaze of Prohibition-era morality. Despite the tumultuous currents that threatened to capsize his academic voyage, McCain emerged from the crucible of Annapolis in 1931, donning the mantle of ensign as he embarked on a voyage into the unknown realms of naval service. His aspirations of soaring amidst the azure skies as a naval aviator were swiftly dashed by the cruel hand of fate, as a heart murmur relegated him to the confines of submarine school at the naval submarine base New London in Connecticut. Here, amidst the solemn depths of maritime education, McCain's journey took an unexpected turn as he found himself navigating the labyrinthine corridors of submarine warfare. Amidst the azure expanse of Long Beach, California, McCain's fate intertwined with that of Roberta Wright, a beacon of innocence amidst the tumult of naval duty. Their clandestine courtship blossomed against the backdrop of societal disapproval, culminating in a clandestine union amidst the vibrant hues of Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. Yet, the tempestuous seas of love were not devoid of trials, as McCain faced the ire of naval discipline, suspended for five days for his audacious escapade. Thus commenced a journey of familial bliss, punctuated by the pitter-patter of children's laughter and the arduous peregrinations dictated by the capricious winds of naval duty. From the verdant shores of New London to the sun-kissed horizons of Pearl Harbor, McCain's familial odyssey mirrored the ebb and flow of naval postings, with Roberta assuming the mantle of matriarch, steering the ship of domesticity amidst the tumultuous seas of separation and reunion. Despite accolades lauding his loyalty and diligence, McCain's career was not devoid of tribulations, as bouts of nervousness and ailments punctuated his tenure, a testament to the toll exacted by the rigors of naval service. From the antiquated confines of World War I era submarines to the cutting edge vessels of modern warfare, McCain's odyssey traversed the spectrum of maritime evolution, culminating in his stewardship of the USS 08, a relic recommissioned as a bastion of naval education amidst the tranquil shores of New London. Thus, amidst the tapestry of McCain's life, woven with threads of valor and sacrifice, emerges a portrait of a man whose indomitable spirit weathered the tempests of adversity, leaving an indelible imprint upon the annals of naval history. Following the devastating attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, John Sidney McCain Jr., now a lieutenant commander, found himself separated from his family for extended periods. Assigned to command the submarine gunnel, McCain joined the vessel in May 1942 for trials, witnessing its commissioning in August of the same year. Gunnel's deployment as part of the November 1942 invasion of French North Africa presented challenging conditions. Overcrowded waters, adverse weather, and communication errors hindered the mission's success. 
Gunnel, like many other U.S. submarines, encountered friendly fire incidents and grappled with the unreliable Huvenoen Drenchler HOR, diesel engines. Despite these setbacks, Gunnel underwent extensive repairs and was redeployed to the Pacific Fleet. In June 1943, McCain led the submarine on patrol in the East China and Yellow Seas. During this mission, Gunnel engaged Japanese vessels, sinking the freighters Koyo Maru and Tokiwa Maru, and engaging in a prolonged confrontation with enemy escorts. Enduring intense counterattacks, McCain demonstrated remarkable resolve, leading his crew through hours submerged underwater. Despite persistent engine troubles that cut short the patrol after only 11 days, Gunnell's successful sinking of enemy freighters contributed significantly to the Pacific Theater's efforts. For his gallantry and leadership during this patrol, McCain was awarded the Silver Star, recognizing his bravery under fire and aggressive fighting spirit. His personality and adaptability proved invaluable in the demanding environment of wartime submarine duty, where adherence to regulations often gave way to the need for improvisation and decisiveness. Gunnell's subsequent missions saw McCain attempting attacks on Japanese carriers off Tai Tai and engaging in operations along the coast of Indochina. His efforts earned him further commendations, including the Bronze Star Medal with Combat 5, for his role in damaging enemy vessels. At the war's end, McCain sailed Dentuda into Tokyo Bay, where he had a poignant final meeting with his father, Admiral John S. Islu McCain Sr., who had commanded the Fast Carrier Task Force. The elder McCain's passing shortly after the Japanese surrender ceremony marked the conclusion of a distinguished naval career. Throughout his wartime service, McCain's dedication to innovation and tactical development earned him recognition and praise from superiors. His contributions to submarine warfare tactics and weaponry underscored his commitment to advancing the U.S. Navy's capabilities in the face of formidable challenges. After the conclusion of World War II, John Sidney McCain Jr. continued his service in the Navy, while his family settled in Northern Virginia. He took on the role of Director of Records at the Bureau of Naval Personnel until early 1949. During this time, he authored an article for the United States Naval Institute Proceedings, delving into the training challenges posed by the nuclear era for the Navy. In 1949, McCain assumed command of Submarine Division 71 in the Pacific, based aboard the submarine CARP. His command took him to various naval stations and included two exploratory cruises to extreme northern waters, contributing valuable insights into strategic areas for submarine operations. From February to November 1950, McCain served as executive officer of the heavy cruiser St. Paul, participating in the early stages of the Korean War as part of Task Force 77 patrolling the Formosa Strait. Ascending in rank to captain, McCain's career trajectory saw him rotating between posts at the Pentagon and various commands. He held roles such as Director of Undersea Warfare Research and Development, Commander of Submarine Squadron 6 aboard flagship Sea Leopard in the Atlantic, and Commander of the Attack Transport Monrovia in the Mediterranean. McCain's relationship with his son, John Sidney McCain III, mirrored his own rebellious youth, with both facing challenges at the Naval Academy. Despite these parallels, McCain's career continued to progress, culminating in his promotion to Rear Admiral in November 1958. During his tenure at the office of the Secretary of the Navy from 1958 to 1960, McCain established influential political connections, playing a pivotal role in legislative affairs. His central D.C. residence became a hub for social gatherings, attended by senators, representatives, admirals, and generals. Promoted to Vice Admiral in July 1963, McCain assumed command of the entire amphibious forces, Atlantic Fleet, Confablant. He spearheaded Operation Sea Orbit, a landmark voyage around the world without refueling, showcasing the Navy's capabilities in the nuclear age. In 1964, McCain commanded Operation Steel Pike, the largest amphibious landing in peacetime, off the coast of Spain, earning accolades for his leadership. He also became a vocal advocate for the geostrategic importance of the merchant marine. Following the April 1965 invasion of the Dominican Republic, McCain led Task Force 124, overseeing the military occupation until civil unrest subsided. Despite controversy surrounding the intervention, McCain's decisive action earned him the Legion of Merit. McCain's multifaceted career included roles such as Vice Chairman of the Delegation to the United Nations Military Staff Committee, Commander Eastern Sea Frontier, and Commander Atlantic Reserve Fleet. Throughout his tenure, McCain remained a charismatic figure, known for his salty character, trademark cigar, and commitment to maintaining naval superiority in the face of evolving geopolitical challenges. 
His efforts to bolster the Navy's capabilities and advocate for a robust merchant marine fleet left a lasting impact on U.S. naval strategy. In February 1967, John Sidney McCain Jr. achieved his long-sought promotion to full admiral, which officially took effect in May of that year. He assumed the role of Commander-in-Chief, U.S. Naval Forces, Europe, Sinkisnever, stationed in London. At the change of command ceremony for his previous post at the Eastern Sea Frontier, held aboard the USS Wasp, McCain was honored with a gold star in lieu of a third legion of merit for his service during his UN assignment. As tensions escalated during the Vietnam War, McCain advocated for bringing Iowa-class battleships out of reserve fleets to support shore bombardment missions. He ordered a naval court of inquiry following the USS Liberty incident in June 1967, with Admiral Isaac C. Kidd Jr. appointed to lead the investigation. Meanwhile, McCain's son, Naval Aviator Lieutenant Commander John S. McCain III, became a prisoner of war in North Vietnam in October 1967 after being shot down during a bombing raid over Hanoi. Despite the personal ordeal, McCain and his wife, Roberta, maintained a stoic demeanor in public, focusing on the hope that their son was alive. McCain continued to emphasize the Soviet threat, particularly in maritime domains, likening it to the space race in terms of propaganda value. In April 1968, amid the height of the Vietnam War, President Johnson appointed McCain as Commander-in-Chief, Pacific Command, SYNCPAC, effective from July 1968. This role placed him in charge of all U.S. forces in the Vietnam theater, stationed in Honolulu. McCain's tenure as SYNCPAC was marked by his fervent briefings on the threat posed by Communist China, earning him the nickname Mr. Sea Power. He remained a staunch advocate for confronting major communist powers with superior force while deterring aggression against smaller countries. During the Nixon administration, McCain played a pivotal role in shaping U.S. policy towards Vietnam and Southeast Asia. He expressed optimism about the prospects for Vietnamization and believed that North Vietnamese weakness and South Vietnamese progress indicated a turning tide in the war. McCain's involvement in expanding U.S. involvement in Cambodia, particularly through Operation Lam Sun 719, reflected his commitment to containing North Vietnamese influence. He maintained close ties with Cambodian leader Lan Nal and advocated for increased military assistance to bolster the Cambodian government's efforts. Despite his stroke in fall 1969, McCain continued to play an active role in shaping U.S. strategy in Southeast Asia. His tenure as SYNCPAC ended in September 1972, with President Nixon praising the contributions of the McCain family to the nation's greatness. McCain's steadfast commitment to victory in Vietnam, despite political constraints, characterized his approach to the conflict. Admiral McCain retired from the United States Navy on November 1, 1972. There was no formal ceremony to mark his retirement, as it would have been redundant after the one held two months earlier in Hawaii. As one associate remarked, he just didn't come to work today. In early 1973, following the conclusion of the Paris Peace Accords, his son, who had been held as a prisoner of war in North Vietnam, was released and repatriated to the United States. In 1975, McCain visited the White House and discussed naval preparedness issues with President Gerald Ford. Throughout the late 1970s, he occasionally advised Ronald Reagan on military matters as Reagan prepared for his third presidential candidacy. McCain also participated in a 1978 traveling Panama Canal Truth Squad, led by Senator Paul Laxalt, opposing the Panama Canal Treaty due to concerns about its implications for U.S. security. Despite his accomplishments, McCain struggled with despair over his forced retirement from the Navy, which eventually took a toll on his health. His son John attributed his father's declining health to years of binge drinking, though he made a mostly successful recovery through Alcoholics Anonymous. Admiral McCain passed away from a heart attack aboard a military aircraft en route from Europe on March 22, 1981, with his wife by his side. He was laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery on March 27, 1981. The legacy of Admiral McCain lives on through various namesakes and commemorations. The USS John S. McCain DDG-56 was named in honor of both Admirals McCain. In 2018, the Navy rededicated the ship to also honor Senator John S. McCain III. Admiral McCain's life and legacy were extensively chronicled in his son John's memoir Faith of My Fathers, and he was portrayed by actor Scott Glenn in the 2005 television movie adaptation. Continuing the family tradition of military service, McCain's grandson, John S. Jack McCain IV, graduated from the United States Naval Academy in 2009, becoming the fourth-generation John S. McCain to do so. 
He followed in the footsteps of his father and great-grandfather by becoming a naval aviator, flying helicopters during the war in Afghanistan. John S. McCain IV has a son, John S. Mac and McCain V, ensuring the family's legacy of service continues into the future. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal in the description box below.